I'm Weston. I love talking about the Rangers, and I'm here to recap game 41 of the regular season. Rangers lose to the Islanders in overtime 3-2, to two, and this one stings because there were four chances I can think of off the top of my head that we could have scored on. There was a three-on-one shorthanded. There was a gorgeous Kravtsov pass over to Butchnevich that he couldn't put in even though the goalie was down on the ground. There was a Heedle dangle in front that he just couldn't quite control the puck of. And late in the third period, there was a shot that went off of an Islander skate that hit the crossbar. Or the, I guess if you want to call it the pipe. It, it was just... It was painful. It was a painful night. We could have picked up two points. We still get one, which is a positive that we get the one uh, that ties us now with Philadelphia for fifth place in the East and now four points behind Boston, which is huge because again, we play the final two games of the season against Boston, which those are shaping up to be two very, very important games of the season. And speaking of those two teams, the Flyers lost today against the Sabres, I believe five to three and Boston just got crushed by the Washington Capitals. It was uh, eight to one. The last time I checked, I think that was the final score. So it was just a bad beatdown of Boston, and that is a fun sentence to say. Uh, and the Rangers do get the point, which is, that's a positive. I was happy with it at the time, but, you know, you're happy with anything at the time, and then later you're like, well, I would have liked the other one. It would have been nice to get two. We still get the one, which is a positive. Uh, but yeah, that's all I want to talk about with that. I want to actually now talk about our game. Uh, and Igor Shesterkin got the start tonight, which I wasn't a fan of. And I am I love Igor Shesterkin. I'm wearing his jersey right now. I would have much rather given it to either Georgiev or Kincaid. I was leaning Georgiev going into the game. He had that fantastic game against the Islanders Friday. Uh, and I would have liked him to give Igor a second game off in a row. So I would have even been fine giving it to Kincaid. We give it to Igor. I thought he played a very good game. Sadly, the Rangers couldn't, you know, win with that good game. But say la vie. He got the start. And... Let's get in on. Let's just get into it, right? First period, 1837. Kreider puts the puck over the glass, meaning that the Islanders get a power play. And on the power play, they would score. Josh Bailey has it. He passes it around a little bit. Then he takes a shot, but uh, Brock Nelson tips it in front over to Kyle Palmieri. He good, puts it in. One nothing Islanders. His first goal as an Islander, and that was a gorgeous pass because it wasn't a tip in attempt I don't think I think it was just straight up a pass over to Palmieri by Nelson and that was a really good play it was smart and it was just it was a nice play by the Islanders which sucks because I put them up one nothing uh, a little bit later on 1242 uh, Wallstrom on the Islanders would interfere with uh, Colin Blackwell couldn't think of it there so the Rangers get a power play we wouldn't do anything with it we had three power plays tonight and we couldn't convert any of them that happens, and not much else happens after the uh, power play for the Rangers for a while. And then with seven seconds left, the Islanders get a rush into the zone, and they leave John gabriel Pajon wide open for a score. He just risks it in, and it's 2 nothing going into the second period, which I don't think the Rangers played a completely terrible first period of hockey. I don't think it was good by any means, but we've played way worse periods in the first and still, you know, not been down to nothing. So I wasn't totally upset with it. I thought we had some good moments, but we still go down into it to nothing. And I thought Shesterkin played a really good first period. I know he let in two goals, but that was on 17 shots by the Philadelphia, or not the Philadelphia Flyers, I have them on my mind, uh, by the Islanders. Like, I thought he played pretty good, and I just wanted to see the Rangers start actually converting on some chances in the second so period. In the second period, early on, 15-18, Matt Martin gets a call for tripping on Kevin Rooney, where he went knee-to-knee with him, which looked just so much, like, so much fun. And by that, I mean cripplingly painful. I don't know how that can happen to a player, and you just keep on going after that. The Rangers get a power play, and we wouldn't do anything with it, because, you know, that's a theme this season. But then, a little bit later on, 9:37, the Rangers would get a goal to make it 2-1. to one. Uh, in the offensive zone, Filipino takes a shot. The rebound is controlled by Capo Caco. He looks around for an open man. He seems high, hijack open. He passes over to him. He holds it for a split second and then takes a shot. And it's in from the blue line. Two to one. The Rangers cut it in half. And then very soon after, they would tie it up. 744. The Rangers win an offensive zone faceoff. Uh, Kravtsov has it. He passes over to Mika, but Mika can't quite do anything with it. It just kind of bounces off of him. And Brendan Smith just runs in, takes a shot, and boom, it's 2-2. Two two. That is Vitaly Kravtsov's first NHL point. And I know he got the secondary assist, but 
Meek is a bad I didn't do anything. He just had it bounce off of him. It really should have been a primary assist. And Kravtsov played a wonderful game tonight. There was, I already mentioned it, but a pass from him to Butchnevich that should have been a goal. And that was just a gorgeous pass by Vitaly Kravtsov. I thought he was probably our best player tonight. I don't think I'm stretching if I say that. Uh, a little bit later on, 17 si- or 7-16 left in the period. Ryan Strom for slashing. The Islanders would get a power play, and we wouldn't allow anything on it. But on that power play, we got the three-on-one breakaway, which, look, if you get a three-on-one breakaway just at any point in a game and you don't convert on it, I'm already going to be upset about it. Like, I'm already going to complain. But the fact that it was a short-handed breakaway for three-on-one makes me even more angry. We had all the momentum. Like, logic, I say logic, it's a sporting event, there is no logic, we should have gotten that, and with the momentum, gotten a goal to t- make it a 3-2 to two lead, but I think it was Howden just kind of flubbed the pass, and we don't even get a shot off, which, like, that's, more so than that, we don't even enter the zone, like, do you know, I, I don't think I've ever seen a 3-on-1 breakaway for a team on a short-handed by the way, three-on-one breakaway, where you don't even enter the zone. Like, that was that was just special ineptitude by the Rangers on that play to not get anything going. Uh, I also noticed in the second period, we were turning over the puck just too much. Like, the Islanders are too good of a team to be turning it over this much. We'd had ten turnovers to the Islanders. And that uh, the Islanders are a very good team. And you can't do that that many times and expect to win, which was frustrating. The second period, while we did go up, you know, get the two goals to tie it, I thought there were a few missed opportunities, which were just kind of bummers going into the third period. Even though in it was the third tied. period rather early, 1606, Matt Martin again for tripping, and the Rangers get another power play, but we wouldn't do anything with it. Then at 1057, Adam Fox, of all players, gets a call for high sticking, and Adam Fox looked upset about it. He had a pretty bad game tonight, and... That's unusual for Adam Fox, and you could tell he was getting frustrated that he was having a bad game because he's used to being Adam Fox and having very, very good games. So it's a power play for the Islanders. They wouldn't do anything with it. We killed it off pretty well, and I thought that was going to be a turning point because we I don't even think we allowed a shot on that power play. It was a very good penalty kill. And I thought, okay, we're going to take this momentum and turn it into a goal. We wouldn't, which was a bummer. Then 129 left in the period. Uh, Mayfield and Butchnevich kind of got into it. Butchnevich was just a second late or early, excuse me, for an offside call, and they got into it. I don't know how that wasn't just a penalty on the Islanders and a Rangers power play, if I'm being honest with you. But Janevich just kind of seemed like he just stood there, and Mayfield seemed like he started roughing him up. I don't know how it wasn't both. I don't know how it was both, is my point. But it's 4-on-4 four four for the remainder of the last minute 30 of the game, and neither team really gets anything. So we head into overtime. Again, we get the point, which is huge, but we, I'd really like to see us win this game, I was thinking to myself. My exact note was, we need to win this game, Boston got crushed, and this is how we can start closing the gap. And we wouldn't, you know, we didn't close the gap. In overtime, 3.57, uh, Briz- Bezel? Brazel, excuse me. Am I saying that right? Brazel, yeah, I am saying that right, I don't know why I thought I wasn't. Uh, and Zajac get a 2-on-1 going into the offensive zone for themselves, and Shesterkin with this fantastic save moving left to right to just, you know, keep it tight at that point and keep over time alive, but then very soon after we wouldn't. 347. The Rangers trot out a line in overtime, a 3-on-3, of Keandre Miller, uh, Ryan Strom and Philip Heedle. I have a few questions about this line. Um, mainly, why? Why is that the combination you're using? Uh, I really didn't get it. I wasn't a fan of that. I would have liked to have seen maybe Lingrid there instead of uh, Miller. Maybe, you know, not two centers on the same line in overtime. I don't get why we did that, but we did, and it was bad. Uh, Paula gets left wide open. Keandre Miller comes flying in to try to stop it, but he can't do anything at that point. You leave a guy wide open in overtime, and he go, he gets it. He scores. It's 3-2. to two. It's over. So the Rangers pick up a point, but man, it would have been nice to pick up that second point in this position. You know, Boston just got crushed, and this would have been huge to get that point. Uh, now, my thoughts for the players, right? Uh, I thought the KZB and the Panarin, Strom, Blackwell line were straight up bad tonight. I was very unimpressed with both lines. 
which is unusual that your top six play, I thought, as poorly as they did. Uh, but it happened. Fox also had a pretty underwhelming night. I wasn't really ecstatic about that. I thought Miller was kind of meh. I thought Truba had a meh night. Like, not necessarily bad, but just uneventful, I felt, which is unusual for, you know, th- those three defensemen who are usually fantastic to have men nights, and the top six that are usually, at the very least, Panarin and Strom are usually very good, and they just sort of were, eh. I thought Blackwell was probably the best of the top six tonight, which is not a, a sentence I thought I'd say going into this. Uh, and easily, the best two lines were the kids' line, I would say, was probably the best, and the fourth line was the second. I would probably say it was the kids' line, the fourth line, the Panarin line, and then the KZB in that order, and which was kind of shocking. And I thought our three best players tonight were Kravtsov, Lafreniere, and Kako. Those three go hard every single game they play. I thought Kravtsov had a great night. I think legitimately he could have had three points if we didn't flub on him. Uh, I forgot to make a note for one of them, so I can't quite remember what it was, but I remember vividly thinking that would have been a third point for Kravtsov. And then obviously there was that gorgeous pass over to Butchnevich that he just kind of missed on. And there was obviously the point that he got. So I thought he played really well. Lafreniere is looking more confident, which I said again. I mean, I'm going to keep saying that because he's looking better. Has he gotten a point in the past few nights? No, but he's getting better. Kako, however, did have a point. Primary assist. He looked really good tonight. That is a fourth consecutive game for Kako. Or for Kako, yeah, for getting a point. Which is a very big positive for him. Uh, that's that's huge. I'm very happy about that. Uh, and along with that, I thought Shesterkin had a really good game. 29-32, to 32, which, you know, that might not look fantastic, but I thought he was great. I thought he was magnificent. He had a couple of really, really nice saves that are just, you know, top-tier saves on really good chances. A few tip-ins right in front that he was stopping, and it's a shame that he had to get the loss. You know, I thought he played a really good game. Ilya Soroka, or Sorokin, just played also a magnificent game. The Islanders and Rangers both have their goalies of the future that are going to be duking it out in this city for a long while to come, I truly believe. Uh, so yeah, that happened. Now, the playoffs, right? I want, you, you could see this coming. Um, the Rangers want to keep talking about the playoffs. They talk about it in the press conference. They talk about it when you're not in a press conference and when you're just you know getting asked normal questions. You know, playoffs. That's, that's what they always say. Um... Quinn was talking about, you know, playoffs. Uh, Brendan Smith was talking about playoffs in the presser tonight. And here's the thing. You got a point tonight. Cool. You want to you wanna talk playoffs? You want to do that, Rangers? You want to do that? You want to act like you're going to hang with the big boys? You have four games coming up. All of them are against the Devils. They are a pretty bad team this season. You play them Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Win three of the four. That's it. Win three of the four. If you don't get at least six points out of these next five or four games, I don't want to hear playoffs again. Because the, the, if you want to be a playoff team, playoff teams win series like this. Granted, not series like this. That sounds kind of weird. They win games against teams like this. You're going to play four in a row against the Devils. And if we can't at least take three of them, I'm going to be mad. I dare say you need to get at least seven points. You know, if you lose to them, it should be in overtime. But I'm saying six points is the minimum you can get out of the eight that are on the table in the next four games. I think that would be... I think that's just fair. I think that's more than fair. And... I don't know what else to say. Like, you got to get those points against the Devils coming up. I think that's going to be huge if you want to actually continue and hang with the big boys in this conference and potentially make a playoff run. So that's it. That's all I have to say. Um, Again, I don't think it was a terrible game by the Rangers. I just thought they could have... The top six didn't really perform, which was kind of strange to say that about Artemi Panarin. I don't think I've ever really talked ill about him, which, you know, feels weird to say because I freaking love Artemi Panarin. He's a fantastic player. But you got to call it like it is. Tonight was a rough game by the Rangers, and they had more than enough opportunities to win it. So that is all I have to say. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day. And as always, go Rangers.